Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining Tribe for Korim on this daily prayer and Bible reading journey. We will read through the Bible using the one-year Bible reading plan and end in prayer. Today it is January 20th and we will be reading from Genesis chapter 41 verses 17 through 57 and chapter 42 verses 1 through 17. Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 through 46. Psalm chapter 18 verses 1 through 15. And Proverbs chapter 4 verses 1 through 6. Let's begin. Genesis chapter 41 verses 17 through 57. Pharaoh spoke to Joseph. In my dream, behold, I stood on the brink of the river, and behold, seven fat and sleek cattle came up out of the river. They fed in the marsh grass, and behold, seven other cattle came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for ugliness. The thin and ugly cattle ate up the first seven fat cattle, and when they had eaten them up, it couldn't be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ugly, as at the beginning. So I awoke, I saw in my dream, and behold, seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven heads of grain, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads of grain. I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. What God is about to do he has declared to Pharaoh. The seven good cattle are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. The dream is one. The seven thin and ugly cattle that came up after them are seven years, and also the seven empty heads of grain blasted with the east wind. They will be seven years of famine. That is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Behold, seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt are coming. Seven years of famine will arise after them, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land, and the plenty will not be known in the land by reason of that famine, which follows, for it will be very grievous. The dream was doubled to Pharaoh, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look for a discreet and wise man, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint overseers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt's produce in the seven plenteous years. Let them gather all the food of these good years that come, and store grain under the hand of Pharaoh for food in the cities, and let them keep it. The food will be to supply the land against the seven years of famine, which will be in the land of Egypt, so that the land will not perish through the famine. The thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Pharaoh said to Joseph, Because God has shown you all of this, there is no one so discreet and wise as you. You shall be over my house. All my people will be ruled according to your word. Only in the throne I will be greater than you. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in robes of fine linen, and put the gold chain about his neck. He made him ride in the second chariot which he had. They cried before him, bow the knee. He set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. Without you, no man shall lift up his hand or his foot in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh called Joseph's name Sophoneth Penia. He gave him Asenath the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, as a wife. Joseph went out over the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. In the seven plenteous years, the earth produced abundantly. He gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. 
he stored food in each city from the fields around that city. Joseph laid up grain as the sand of the sea, very much, until he stopped counting, for it was without number. To Joseph were born two sons before the year of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For, he said, God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. The name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. The seven years of plenty that were in the land of Egypt came to an end. The seven years of famine began to come, just as Joseph had said. There was famine in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. What he says to you, do. The famine was over all the surface of the earth. Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. The famine was severe in the land of Egypt. All countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the earth. Genesis 42 verses 1 through 17. Now Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, and Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? He said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy for us from there, so that we may live and not die. Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt, but Jacob didn't send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with his brothers, for he said, Lest perhaps harm happen to him. The sons of Israel came to buy among those who came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Joseph was the governor over the land. It was he who sold to all the people of the land. Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves down to him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers, and he recognized them, but acted like a stranger to them and spoke roughly with them. He said to them, Where did you come from? They said, from the land of Canaan, to buy food. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. They said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. He said to them, No. What you have come to see the nakedness of the land? They said, We, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is today with our father, and one is no more. Joseph said to them, It is like I told you, saying, You are spies, by this you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not go out from here, unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him get your brother, and you shall be bound, that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh surely you are spies. He put them all together into custody for three days. Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 through 46. He set another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while people slept, his enemy came and sowed darna wheat also among the wheat, and went away. But when the blade sprang up and produced grain, then the darna weeds appeared also. The servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did these darna weeds come from? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest perhaps while you gather up the darna weeds, you root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the harvest time I will tell the reapers, First, gather up the darna weeds and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. He said another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took, and sowed in his field, which indeed is smaller than all seeds, but when it is grown, 
it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until it was all leavened. Jesus spoke all these things in parables to the multitudes, and without a parable, he didn't speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house. His disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the darnel weeds of the field. He answered them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world. The good seeds are the children of the kingdom, and the darna weeds are the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. As therefore the darna weeds are gathered up and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of this kingdom all things that cause stumbling and those who do iniquity and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid. In his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a merchant seeking fine pearls, who having found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Psalm chapter 18 verses 1 through 15. I love you, Yahweh, my strength. Yahweh is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I call on Yahweh, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death surrounded me. The floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The cords of Sheol were around me. The snares of death came on me. In my distress I called on Yahweh, and cried to my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. My cry before him came into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the mountains quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Smoke went out of his nostrils. Consuming fire came out of his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. Yes, he soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place, his pavilion around him, darkness of waters thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness before him his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. Yahweh also thundered in the sky. The Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. He routed them with great lightning bolts. Then the channels of waters appeared. The foundations of the world were laid bare at your rebuke, Yahweh, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 1 through 6. Listen, sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and no understanding, for I give you sound learning. Don't forsake my law, for I was a son to my father, tender and an only child in the sight of my mother. He taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Don't forget, and don't deviate from the words of my mouth. Don't forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Abba Father, we give thanks to you for everything. We are eternally grateful for all you have done for us. Although we fail you daily, you continue to show us love, grace, and mercy. Your love is unfathomable and it never fails. We acknowledge your sovereignty in all the earth and thank you for being our God. Please forgive us for anything we have said, done, or thought that was not pleasing to you. Create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. 
Bless us with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, maturity, discernment, and focused minds. Take away any thoughts or feelings that are not in alignment with you. Open our eyes to the wonderful things of your law and make it an engrafted word in us. May we live lives according to your will, denounce our sinful nature, lay our sins at your feet and walk in obedience to you for your glory. Lord, we thank you for calling us into a covenant relationship with you and making a way for us to enter your kingdom. We know that one day, Jesus will return and gather all believers. We ask that you bless your people with the right words to speak to unbelievers that they may come into the knowledge of Christ and be counted among the number of your people. We ask that you pierce hearts and unconfused minds, allowing people to be led to the truth of the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Remove all barriers that block people from seeing, hearing, and understanding your love for them. Move from heart to heart, depositing a thirst for reading the Holy Scriptures. May our hearts retain your words that we may keep your commandments and live the life you have purposed for us. As we live by your word, strengthen us to never forsake it that we may be preserved. As we speak your word, may we encourage others to stand on your word and not deviate from it. We present our bodies as living sacrifices to you and ask that you make us aware of your presence and what you are doing in the earth today. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep our physical bodies, homes, modes of transportation, places of employment, bank accounts, credit and investments and communities safe from all hurt, harm and danger. Expose and obliterate anything that dares to come against your people. Bring complete and total healing to our minds, emotions and bodies. May your perfect will be done in the earth. We pray this prayer over ourselves and everyone connected to us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the shalom peace of God follow you for the rest of your days.